Chad from Flash Performance, and today is a good day because my tubing notcher from Rogue Fab, the Versa notcher, has finally arrived. Let me show you what I'm dealing with. I'm working on building a set of kickers, tree kickers, for my Honda Talon, and I was going through the process, and I've been getting some okay notches and I got everything laid out and I had to put a spacer in between and I was having issues getting the right length for the spacer and so I have to notch these and to notch them you have to do it with the pipe let's see it's sticking out like this and the challenge I was running into is I kept on getting the challenge I was running into, I kept on getting notches like this, where half of it would notch and the other half wouldn't. It'd be offset, it'd be off center. This cheap Harbor Freight POS just ain't gonna cut it anymore. I actually had to shim out with washers trying to get this thing to be in the center and with the limitations of how long the hole saw can be and the play, I, I was just over it. So it's time to upgrade, and what better way to upgrade than to go with what I already know. My Robe Fab tubing bender has been phenomenal for me, so why not get their Versa notcher as well? So right there it is. Let's open up the box, see what's inside. So I hesitated. I actually hesitated for a little while trying to see, trying to decide and trying to justify making this purchase. and. It's not a cheap purchase, but I'm thinking about some of the projects that I have coming up, and I think it's a good investment. It's an investment that I'm gonna get my money back out of just in sheer torturing myself with that other stupid notcher. So there's gonna be some other pieces in here that, that I ordered also for my tubing bender, and that is this right here. This is, get this cut open for you. This is a two inch roller for my tubing bender. So um, on the original setup when I bought this a couple years ago, uh, it's just a square block. And so I upgraded to this roller. So now I don't have to worry about that block flopping over on me. This is gonna be a nice addition. So got that in the box. Got some Rogue Fab swag. And oh, by the way, if you uh, go on to their website and you buy swag, you get set up into a drawing for some free stuff. So make sure you check them out for that too. Ah, this one. So this is so this is a block holder. So you put this on your tube and you lock it down and you can put your indicator block on there so you know what the position of the tube is so when you're going corners you can make sure you always have it at a perfect zero or 90 degrees on the tube so got that guy all's well i have so this is the versa notcher pro kit and i got the extra deep hole saws and that's what these are so these are the extra deep hole saws so you can actually cut at 45 degree angles without having to back out and cut out that notch that's halfway out. So I got the extra deep, came with some Tap Magic cutting oil, and in there as well are the arbors. And I'll show you that and why that's important here in a moment. Uh, I got the indicator that goes on the side of the tubing bender, and that is going to measure on the degree wheel. Uh, it's a little bit better than having just a normal wire, so just went ahead and invested in that. And then this is the main show right here. This is the Versa Notcher. So one of the things I mentioned was this is an investment. This is not something that is, you know, bottom of the barrel cheap like you're going to get at the, the Harbor Freight Store. This is our T-handle, and that goes right on there. And we can take that off, and we can adjust it as needed. 
All right, so let's talk about some of the pieces and why this is a little bit of an investment. So my old tubing notcher uses bushings, bronze bushings, basically, for the shaft that you hook the drill to. And you'll notice that this one has true roller bearings in there. So one of the things that I was challenged with on my old unit is you always have to spray that thing down so that the bronze bushings don't burn up. So this is quite the improvement. So this is our where our drill attaches to, and you can see that they flatten the sides so that way it's a true connection. They have a place for our wrench to go if we need to pull the arbors out for any reason. And then this just simply slides right in there, and you'll notice that there is a seal on this end to keep nastiness out, and there's a seal on this end to keep nastiness out, and that is a beautiful ride on there with those roller bearings, and you don't have any wiggle whatsoever. So I'm going to go ahead and get my old junkie notcher taken off the vise, and we'll mount this guy up. Look at this. It's actually engraved, so all of my degree marks are engraved, and I don't have to worry about those being laser etched where they could wear off. Those aren't going anywhere, and I have my proper division. So you can see 45, we'll bump that right there, 45, boom, we're on. And then you have 50, and then we have a half of that. So we can go actually 47 and a half. So pretty cool that we can get that accurate without having to put an angle finder on it every time just to find my, my measurements. Very nice. Okay, keep going. Keep going, Chad. Focus. Focus, Chad. So our next step in the process is to install the arbor on the drill-driven shaft. You'll see these arbors have a three flat on them. Focus. There you go. And that just sits right in here in the end, and you put your hole saw on that. So now when you want to take your hole saw off or switch it out, you'd pull the whole arbor out and put the whole another set of arbors in. There are six little set screws there on the outside, so we're going to go ahead and take those out and put NICs on them because that's what the directions say to do, and I'm reading the directions. Now that we have those in, we'll go ahead and put that arbor in there with the flats at all the set screws. And we'll just go ahead and tighten all those down. Now, I, I love the instructions. It says, make sure that they're very tight. That way you don't have any vibration. So we're going to go ahead and put the uh, German torque spec on there, which is guten tight. So we're going to get those guten tight. So we don't have to worry about any deflection. No problems. Next step is the bearing block. And it's called a bearing block because it actually has bearings in it. Huh. Amazing concept. You put bearings in it and it lasts longer. Who'd have thunk it, right? So we're just going to loosen these these T-blocks up here. And we're going to put the T-blocks in from the back side, put the bearing block back here on this side, and then we'll run our arbor in there. And point of notification is there's a groove right there. And that groove matches up with the lines that are machined into this piece. So make sure you get that set in there the right way. That way you can use that when you are getting the right height on your pipe settings. You'll notice that those increments are eighth of an inch increments, just an FYI. There ain't a lot of wiggle room on these pieces. They are precision machine. This is pretty nice. All right, so they're all kind of loose and you can see that that block moves up and down pretty darn easy. So that part is ready. Our next step is to put the arbor into the machine. And we can do that from this direction. Now, one of the things it did say is make sure that you grease those bearings regularly. They do need to be greased. And to do that, you just pull that guy out. You can put your grease in there on both ends, stick her back in and it should last a very, very, very long time. Now, I just noticed something. I, uh, I actually put this in my vise backwards because the handle is over there. So let's spin this around. All right, now that makes more sense because the pipe will come in from this side to get notched, and then I have my travel all the way over here. I'm going to turn the vise just a little bit to get it to the right angle. One of the benefits of having it in a vise, they do also make a, a bracket that you can bolt to this and mount it to a cart that you're... Uh, tubing bender is on as well. 
Last step is to get the handle mounted. Let me zoom in on that so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Now you'll notice that there are four bolts in that and one of those is a little bit different. So the reason for that is you can have your handle removable, which is just these three, or you can have it locked in place. Now I'm gonna have a little bit of a challenge because of how my vise is. Having this in a regular bracket is going to be much, much easier. So it's really quite interesting how this is designed. So you have your, I don't know, call it a spanner bar, what you would call it here, but that, look at that, actually that fits on there really nice. I can do that with the vise on it still. So you have this T-bar on there to really get some, some torque on it if you want to, or if you need to move it a little bit faster, you can use your fingers to, to move that out as well. So very, uh, very well thought out. So I'm actually quite shocked that this clears my vise. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy back in to that hole right there. And that'll actually lock my handle on so I don't have to worry about it flopping around. So you do have the option. You can, you can leave that on or you can leave this out so it has the ability to be taken off. I am going to choose to leave it on since everything clears. Very nice thread. Uh, it spins real easy. <laughs> so, so one of the things in the directions it says, you can bend this. So you don't need to get all He-Man woman hater on that and, and bend it all up. So I'm going to put uh, a little bit of grease on here. I'm gonna grease my bearings and I will be ready for my first notch. So one of the things that I mentioned was I got the pro kit of the Versa Notcher and that means that I get this guy with it. And that is the really deep hole saws. So let's go ahead and get these out. So there is the inch and three quarter. That one is inch and a half. Before I do that, I wanna show you a comparison. So here is the normal hole saw that you would get from your local hardware store. And that is the new hole saw from Rogue Fabrication. You can actually see the line there where it is extended. So you get pretty darn much double the length. So these are the extra deep option. And it's just gonna go right here on that arbor that we put in. Oh, that's smooth. I like it. All right, we're going to get this in the position. We're gonna get it all centered up and ready to go. To do that, I need some tube. So one of the big selling points on this, uh, on this unit is the ability to also notch on a curve. So I can take this guy out and we'll set that down. I'll get a nasty curve piece here. So I can actually stick this guy in here on a curve, put some pressure on it, and now I can adjust my center line to be able to get that anywhere that I need to, which is a pretty nice feature. Let's get that straight piece back in there. Having this much adjustment also lets us to be able to do offset notches. If you needed to notch maybe down farther in the tube and you wanted to just notch the bottom half of it, or if you were notching a square tube and you only wanted to notch the bottom half of it, this gives us that ability as well. So we're going to go ahead and get this centered up. And actually all I did was I just lined up the little notch over here on the, the center line mark, and I know that I am dead center of the entire unit. I don't have to worry about getting too far off. And then each one of these increments is an eighth of an inch. So if I want to go down a half inch, I could just measure off of that. I know exactly where I am. There's no guessing in this. Everything is very well laid out and measured out. So let's just, for, for craps and giggles, let's see how far I can go. I can actually go 95 degrees on one side and I can actually go, ooh, don't do that, hard on it. I can go all the way to the opposite side, hit 90, and then go past it. I can get to 125. I can get to 125 degrees on this side, come all the way back to zero, and back to 90 on this side. 
That is crazy good. One of the things that I mentioned that comes in that pro kit is also this tap magic cutting fluid. You know, before I was using like silicone spray just to try and get it to, to finish cutting. It's actually just going to take a little bit of this right on the end here. Get that to run around a little bit. And we're ready to cut. Yes, I'm going to put safety glasses on. And maybe even ear protection. Just got to find it. Safety first. Here we go. Oh my, that is pretty. All right, I got my distance set. I have it perfectly on zero on my angle finder, so I know that I am going to be perfectly the same with my bird's mouth there. I got my degrees set at 90 because that didn't move, that was locked down. We'll go ahead and lubricate. So I know I can do a little bit of fine adjustment on the way down, just a little bit to get that right in the center. And I just have to do this like, 50,000 more times. But that is pretty epic. Thanks for joining me. I'm Chad from Flash Performance. Make sure you go check them out. Rogue Fabrication, roguefabrication.com. Uh, Versa Notcher MA600 tubing bender. This is not a paid advertisement, but it's something that I really believe in. I've been very impressed with their product so far. Made right here in the United States and uh, great, great quality to go with it. Roguefabrication.com. Chad from Flash Performance. Thumbs up, like, subscribe. We'll see you next time.